This is the Universal Wrestling Podcast. Inside the ring. Outside the ring. It's all here. We're talking about the greatest sport of all, professional wrestling. Come on. And now, here's Nick and Keith. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Welcome back to the Universal Wrestling Podcast. My name is Nick. His name is Keith. If you're here for the first time watching us, listen, listening to us for the first time, thank you so much. And if you returned, thank you again for putting up with our shit. We love it. We love talking wrestling. And we're here. And we got a few different topics tonight, Keith. But big things happening here with you and me. Let's start with you, brother. How are you? I'm good, man. You know, it was uh, we were talking a little bit before we started. Had the, uh, had the anatomy scan for the new little boy. He's looking good. And, yes. uh, yeah, slowly yeah. but surely getting that prepared. Um, you know, one of these weeks we're going to pop on here and I'm going to be in a completely new background, but yes. Oh yes. When? How's the downstairs? How's slow, that but, slow but steady. Um, yep. got yep. some plumbing to fix. Uh, my father-in-law is coming over to help out with tomorrow. I'm nice. hoping to get some, some more damage done this weekend before I, I go away for a little bit. And then, oh yeah. Vacation. Once I, once I come back from Good. vacay, we're, uh. We're real full, full throttle. My cousin's coming down to help with the ceiling up, and then that's it. I'm gonna start buying. Yeah, what is it like? Buying a bunch of everything and nah, or actual he's, ceiling. He works. He does like like drywall. Oh, cool. Like that's like his job. So like he's coming down. We're gonna put Good. drilling all. You know, putting it all up and yeah. Sounds like a lot yeah. of fun. It's gonna be cool. Yes, sir. Cool. Well, Keith. You see the topics here. We got WWE Bad Blood. Let's talk a little Joe Hendry. Brian Danielson is going to retire sometime this year. And then we'll talk a little retire, rehire, revive. So let's get to it. Let's crack open some cold ones and let's get to the wrestling topics. Here we go. Crack open a cold one. With Bad Blood back, which classic pay-per-view should return next? We know it is uh, returning, so we're not going to bring up Bad Blood. Right. But usually with Bad Blood, usually comes with Hell in the Cell. So it's more so the top, the, the concept, because, of course, we want all the classics to come back. But if all the classics come back, they're just names, you know, Unforgiven, slap that on. Um no way out slap that it's just there there's not a lot there with it but when when it comes to a certain few different ple's or big events there's a concept so for example i'm going to take the first one here keith tribute to the troops i love the idea but it just seems like it hasn't been the same since the afghanistan 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 days obviously i don't want us to go back to afghanistan that's not necessary but the the idea and the concept of just going to an arena that is close right. to um in Virginia somewhere. Like, okay, that's cool. They're paying tribute, but let's let's do something different. Let's right. put her on a ship. We've seen that once. Let's let's do something where it seems like it's about the troops and not so much so about, you know, just another event that has to right. um, you know, they bring in the cash. Just something a little different. I don't know, man. I, I know it's tough to do because we're not going back to Afghan. Like that's, let's be honest, you know, like right. that doesn't make sense. It wouldn't make sense <clears throat> now, but what do you got? Let's hear it. I think, uh, so like a little bit more of like, uh, like a concept to it all too, even like that, uh, yeah. that title name. Cause like there literally hasn't been one in like 30 years, more, more than 30 years. But, um, this Tuesday in Texas, like just a, even, or even, you know, like a taboo Tuesday, like a, just a, um, yeah, a not a not weekend like pay per view uh, or PLE, whatever we're you know I, I hate yeah. PLEs, but like a not a not weekend one, you know something yeah. that's like um, you know like not and I feel bad because like this Tuesday in Texas wasn't like a great <clears throat> um, yeah it wasn't a great concept because it like if you if you go back and like when they did that I think it was in like ninety two that I was that I saw when we were talking about this stuff like it was like. In 92 or whatever, and it was like the week after, or like it was like a week after SummerSlam or something. And it was almost like the sun, like it almost made like the pay per view before it, like this, like lead into that rather than making like them both like their own thing. So, like, I think okay. if you're going to bring that concept back, you kind of like spread them out a little bit more, but just, you know, pick yeah. a month, 
pick a month like that's that's like slower or whatever when you're trying to get stuff together before you know maybe in like that kind of lull time between like february and march when we're like about we're not quite at mania yet but we're we're past the rumble and we need to like do some stuff like cool just do like yeah. do your normal whatever one you're gonna name it in between your you know your your roadblock or your whatever stop yeah. rounds and whatnot and then just throw like a you know a taboo tuesday or a this tuesday in texas or whatever you want to call it. we got a bunch of teas yeah. in this country this this tuesday and to, 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 i don't know tallahassee yeah. they love florida it's we tuesday in like, tallahassee yeah you know <clears throat> And you could tie it into like social media, like TikTok or something like that. You exactly. Know, TikTok Tuesday, where it's like beautiful TikTok, you know, Tuesday, love something. It. I mean, exactly. uh, the whole the whole you know voting and all that fan voting is just you know let's be honest, it's, <clears throat> it's not legitimate, and we know that. Um, we've right. seen it in the past where it's like The Rock is going to go one on one with Santino, Morella, JTG, and John Cena. It's like, well, <laughs> vote for who you want now. Yeah. Yeah. I never won. I voted. And then him. out of nowhere, you know, JTG wins or something. It's just, you know, but the concept, and I got another one. I mean, modern era, it seems like Survivor Series and War Games, you know, mm -hmm. are on the, or, or, or now going to be associated so that leaves out the whole brand versus brand and i know right. what is a what is brand versus brand the, the past what few weeks randy's been on raw austin theory's been on raw and it's just you know we can go back and forth with you know right yeah. who is on what brand it is it really brand versus brand or is it just you know <clears throat> smackdown's on friday monday you know raw's on monday and that's really it but uh I'm missing that. I'm missing the brand versus brand. I thought it was just really, really cool to just even the build up too and the storylines going into it was right. specifically Raw versus SmackDown. Now it's just like uh, SmackDown get a team, Raw get a team. Maybe we'll put on something, and if it's not, then it's the Bloodline versus you know, um, what was it? Bloodline versus not the Bloodline. There's like the anti Bloodline like contingent. It was uh, yeah, yeah. I know um, Owens was in there. Yeah, Randy Owens and Sammy. Um, I think I think it was yeah. Drew. Drew and yeah. Sheamus. Drew, Sheamus, Randy, Kevin. Yeah. Yeah, I don't Justin, know. But, Justin, help us out in the comments. Come on, bud. But even like associate <laughs> NXT now, you know that that would be something cool. Right. You know, it's just I, I miss that. I know it's difficult to do because it's really you know. I There's think no that's the tough thing. Of, I, I yeah. don't disagree with you. I, I would love, uh, you know, a brand warfare kind of a bragging rights or a, a Survivor Series like it was that year when it was the exactly. Raw SmackDown NXT kind of ones and everything. It's just, I, it is like you just kind of said, like, it's just tough because it's like if you if you want to have that kind of pay-per-view and everything, that's fine. But you got to like, it requires, I feel like it just like requires too much like. It does. Which it's like crap to put it this way because like this is what their friggin' jobs are. But it's like it requires like too much focus outside of that pay-per-view. Like the first, yeah. the very first time when they did <clears throat> Raw SmackDown NXT, they they built that one up enough. And granted, maybe part of that was like, you know, the, the Saudi plane incident kind of like forced them to do so. But like that helped a lot where it was like NXT showed up and there was a bunch of NXT versus SmackDown matches stuff yes. going on because they were missing people or whatever for it. And that was great. But like you know it's like the, we we've seen it so many times in the past like when the when the brand split first came back survivor series that year was like you know uh, rollins and rollins and ambrose or rollins and uh, seth, seth and roman were like fighting with each other like three yeah. weeks before survivor series and then because they're both big names they're both in the raw team so like now they're teammates and it's like well yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, and then and then Ambrose, who was on SmackDown, like helped them do a triple power bomb to Strowman, I think, or someone else. Like it was just like, yeah, do it or don't. You know, like I'm yeah. all for it. Like yes, let's do it, but like do it then. I don't want it to be just like storyline, storyline, storyline. All right, it's November or whatever month yeah. that it's coming up. So now all of a sudden, I'm wearing a SmackDown shirt because I'm on SmackDown and I rep this brand when like three weeks before you were floating back and forth and cutting promos on Raw because they yeah. needed you to. Like, yeah. And you know what else too? I didn't I didn't think about this, but you brought something up where it's like, it's kind of difficult, but it's their job. And it I guess it would be difficult because it seems like every pay-per-view is just <clears throat> in another country or it's just, you know, 
uh, a big deal with some sort of just, you know, a single match with like Gunther or something or can Sammy. It's like it's more about <clears> the storyline <throat> than the actual concept of the pay-per-view, the PLE, which is I get it, because if you think about it, like Raw versus SmackDown, that means Raw team and SmackDown team, those, you know, writers have to get together and say, you know, right. Randy is going to go one on is going to mess, you know, you know, show up on Raw. Even and well, yeah. Cody and then Cody's going to do this and that. So I like get that part it, of it. Like, yeah, that part of it to me. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to jump in with it, but like that part of it no. to me isn't even like the hard thing. It's more of it's just like we it's fine if it's like, you know, we know the pay-per-view yeah. is going to be just I keep harping on November because that's when it was with Survivor Series, whatever. So like just keeping it there, like, all right, we know come November we have yeah. brand yeah. warfare and everything. Great. OK, cool. What that means, though, is that nobody from Raw should be showing up on SmackDown to pick any fights or do anything until like yeah mid-October, early October, maybe. Yeah. And it shouldn't be as it shouldn't be a consistent thing. Like if Randy is on Raw and he's going to fight Cody on SmackDown, fine. Randy shouldn't be on every episode of Raw and SmackDown every week leading up to that pay-per-view. Like yeah. you have it in between so you like you can build it and everything and that's fine, but it also should then be like once that's done, Randy shouldn't be on SmackDown again, right? Is that what I said? Yeah. Randy was on Raw, whatever. He should the, the person shouldn't be on the other brand again for a while after that again. Or a while before we get to October, whatever it is, to build it, and that's yeah. really like, the problem. Always was was it was like, well, it's the brand split, and then there's the whatever that rule was they had, where it was like the oh wow, oh man, I can't remember what they called it when McMahon was just like, oh yeah, these people they can come back and forth sometimes. Yeah, wild to, card. It's like yeah. wild card rule. That was it. Yes, like just no, man. Like if yeah. you're if you're having it's a tough. split, have a split, and just do the do the split. And that would yeah. make these kind of it would make that kind of pay per view better and like more yeah. of a you know more of like a viable thing. I was thinking but, of like yeah. a rebellion, but I mean we have rebellion every other. Well, so that was now, I was gonna you know? say that was my other one. Like I know it's a little bit different now because they're starting to like go overseas more. But there was that stretch that I I do like where it was just like, yep, call it whatever. Um, but just like having that like knowing that like there's one pay per view every year that's gonna be in. It was always yeah. like in London. There London. was like insurrection. Yeah. Um, rebellion yes, was yeah. the one of them. Um, you know, do it. Bring, let's bring that back again. Yeah. You know, if they're I not going to be putting the bigger event, if well, I mean, they have been, but like, if we're not going to have WrestleMania overseas or like SummerSlam overseas or Rumble, you know, in a different yeah. country, that's fine. We're bringing other pay per views there and everything, and that's great. But like, you know especially for the UK fans, because I feel like there's such a huge market over there with it. Like do yeah. that one every year, you know, you'll always sell that one out. If you know that even if they're not getting a WrestleMania necessarily, we know that like, Hey, yeah. In March we get insurrection or, you know, exactly. Capital. Yeah, the last... Oh yeah. <laughs> with big Brock Obama. That was so cringy. <laughs> so bad. One last one, and it's, uh, I don't know what you would call it, but the concepts there, I mean, the next topic is Joe Hendry, and I would think something along the lines of a TNA crossover would be really cool. I know that is wishful thinking. Trust me, I get it. It was Vince where we didn't even say Impact or TNA or AJ never wrestled anywhere other than AJ never wrestled anywhere other than the WWE, but it seems like we're slowly getting to maybe something like that. It would be cool. I don't know what you would do. I think maybe Trips just wants, you know, Teen Air Impact to work with NXT and not bring them up to the main roster, but it would be cool. I mean, I think it would be historical, sure. right? I don't think we've ever, I mean, ECW to an extent, but that was just more like a, of a invasion angle, not really, you know, wwe guys going over to tna and vice versa so that that's I, another one i think that's a great idea i don't think it's out of the realm mm. of possibility either i think we still just are like yeah. in kind of like the infancy of this like working relationship yeah. between what them is and tna yeah. um because it's already i'm i'm all i, I don't want to like make it sound like i'm like ragging on it in any way because i'm in full support of it and everything but it is like even now, it's like a little bit, like kind of, it's a little bit disproportionate. Like yeah, NXT, like going NXT is coffee. getting, yeah, NXT yeah. Hendry's on like every week, which is awesome. I'm not complaining about that. We're about to no. have a big love fest with him in a minute. Don't worry. Um, but like he's on NXT every week. 
like NXT has him almost every week. They've had Jordan Grace. The <laughs> I don't. Yeah. I don't need to go off on her. I've. I've love her to death. Everybody who watches this channel before knows that. If it is your first time watching it, I love Jordan Grace. Have for a long time. Um, you know they got the Rascals, who are maybe not everybody's cup of tea, but they're a huge tag yeah. team in TNA. And like, meanwhile, on the flip side, like the biggest, and I hate to put it in quotes because I like them, but like the biggest name that they've sent to TNA to this point is like Charlie Dempsey. Uh, like Charlie Dempsey went yeah. over and wrestled recently. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think of who else it was. Uh, friggin' Tatum Paxley, Izzy yeah. Dame. Like, they're cool. I don't, I love NXT. Like, they're, they're cool. Like, just seeing them on there and stuff. But it's just like, yeah. you know, no offense to either uh, one of them, but it's like Jordan Grace. Yeah. Tatum Paxley. Yeah. You know, like Izzy Dame. Yeah. Yeah, Jordan's still yeah. way up here. Like you're still not even making it a two for one evenness there. Like, you know, she's Jordan Grace yeah. is a friggin' monster. She's a star. She's awesome. Hendry is he's up here. Charlie Dempsey is like as yeah. close to or you can see my fingertips still, but like you know exactly. It just needs to be yeah. more proportionate. And then I think when if we get to that point of making it more proportionate, I don't think there's anything saying that we can see a TNA crossover pay per view. Yeah. Whatever they would uh, call it, not Forbidden yeah. Door. Would it, Grace called it something when she showed up, the something portal. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, something like it would that, be cool. absolutely be amazing. Yeah. Bring back some of the concepts. You know, it's 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 a fun thing to do. It, it's tough. I get it to, you know, build a storyline to a concept, you know, pay per view that has, you know, a Hell in a Cell or Elimination Chamber. Like, I get it. It's It sells itself, but. And they don't really do much of selling the storyline when they, you know, head to Elimination Chamber. Just, well, it's in Australia and it's, you oh, know, yeah. Punk's here. So maybe that's how we can sell it. <laughs> like, I want it like steel cage and it's, you know, takes years off your body and right. blah, blah, blah. It's just like, oh, we're going to Australia and this will be fun and maybe Punk will return. I get it. There's a lot that goes into it. But um, let's get to the next topic here. We brought him up. Yeah. Let's talk more about him. It is Joe Hendry. Joe Hendry is, uh, this is, you know, Keith, something, something that we have never seen before with the WWE. Yes, we can say we've seen the ECW and, you know, those guys back in the day. And it just, you know, it was more so just a, uh, a partnership with Vince and Heyman. But this is legit because he is not, now, maybe one, if not the biggest star right now as we speak in Impact. And to see him on NXT on a weekly basis is just, uh, I don't I, I don't want to say it, but I'm going to say it because it's the only way I can describe it. It's like mm -hmm. historical. It's like breaking barriers. And I know, I know that sounds like, Nick, what are you talking about? You know, this is not, you know, the first women's match main eventing WrestleMania. I get it. I do. But it's like. We've never seen this before, and they're actually using him. Yes, he's going against Coffee and those guys, and, you know, maybe, you know, like we discussed with the last topic, you know, tick for tack. Is it really apples versus apples here? But it's it's big. I'm going to let you go because you brought this topic up and talk about it. Let's talk about his recent success because we sure. haven't seen this, you know. So Hendry's, Hendry's another one that, like, Maybe not as long as I've been beating the Jordan Grace drum. I've been beating the Hendry drum for a long time. Maybe not as long as Jordan Grace, but he, he's yeah. been up there for me. He's awesome. Um, and, like, he's he's reached this, like, point now. He's, like, almost, almost, not even almost. He kind of has already, like, transcended, like, even, like, pro wrestling. Like, I was, I was trying to think of, like, how to word it to you when we were, like, talking about this to, like, the other day to, like, bring this up on here. But, like, you know, it was, like it's hard to like compare him to like the rock or something because the rock came from a time when like wrestling was really like mainstream wrestling is getting back to the point of being mainstream, but like, we're not quite where we were in the attitude era, you know, like everybody knew who the rock was. Everybody knew who stone cold was. These like these names like that. So like, he's not quite to the level of the rock, but like, you know, he, he knocked, he, he knocked Taylor Swift off the charts in the UK. Like, through, through literally nothing but himself. He went on to social media and was just like, hey, I'm yeah. finally releasing my theme song as a single on Spotify. I want, I want like everybody's help because I just want to make, I just want to make the, the charts for like a day. And they did it. He never hit number one, I don't think, but he knocked a couple of Taylor Swift songs off the charts. Like 
he's he's there there's uh the you you sent me the tiktok for it i had seen it on on x like recently oh, the weather it anyway the weather and there's the yeah it's the sports announcer in like san diego oh, being like, say yes, his yes. name and he appears and it does the and he's like no 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 not you get it and it talks and he starts talking about the actual player or whatever you know like yeah he's he's almost at that level of like he's transcending like you know <clears throat> Yeah, wrestling in general not even just he's transcending tna and nxt like he's just yeah he's getting up there he's he's just he's awesome i'm really glad he's like getting you know his flowers with it all here and it's not to he is like arguably the biggest star in tna and that's not to like take away from anybody else in there because josh alexander is amazing speedball mike bailey is probably one of the best wrestlers if not the like like best, like most dynamic to watch wrestler, like on the planet right now. Like the speedball is mean, amazing just, too. Like, yeah, and like, even like like a, a moose who's just. I don't right. think there's anyone, in my opinion, moose is better. But you know, this is about Joe Hendry. I got you. It's yeah. like neck and neck. It's like, yeah, holy shit, man! It's really, really impressive. Um, what I'll say here, and again, I said historical and all that, but it just it reminds me of a, a modern day, um, Mac. Cordona, you know. I was where, just like, about to say that. I don't. I yeah. don't want to. The him and Hendry had a feud for a little bit when Cardano first came into Impact, so I don't yeah. want to like insult Joe Hendry and saying that if he does watch this. But like, yeah, it's totally. not an insult. Yeah. No, it's, totally, it's definitely not. I mean, uh, you know, with the whole internet thing and him climbing over the fences and doing the gimmicky, mm-hmm. you know, shit to get over. I mean, Hendry's doing that. Yes, he's part of a company, and yes, he's you know a main. Uh, spot a, a spotlight a, a big part of For tna sure. or uh impact and you know Ryder was just trying to get over with the wwe universe and with you know vince um and i just think it's you know again yes he is you know on nxt every every week you see him on impact but right. he's doing things we haven't seen before you know like you said with the the sports guy with uh charting the you know topping the charts there right. and you know just really pushing the movement not just on you know uh impact and uh wwe television but right on x on tiktok i don't know if he has a tiktok but on x <clears throat> on instagram i don't know if he has instagram i just know that he's on x i know he's, yeah. on, I know he's on tiktok too because i when he yeah the announcement to like you know my song's coming out and play it I, that popped up on my mm-hmm. tiktok that yeah my tiktok feed with him um yeah but yeah he just he just like he just gets it uh and like I, my biggest hope out of all this is that like and it, it has already actually like honestly like yeah done, like with him like starting to get more of that like that audience and like starting to get more of that appeal and stuff like some of his older stuff is coming up which is like really i i love like the things that he's done and everything but like yeah when like people you know People who know Hendry from before, and I'm not trying to sound like a gatekeepy asshole in saying that, but you know what I mean. Like people who know him from like before, when they like announced where he was going to put on a concert on NXT for like one of the Great American Bash, I was like, oh, yeah. oh man, like I know they're not going to be able to do it that way, but like go watch any of even the stuff like even his more recent things like he had just kind of done in like Impact, like his song parody stuff is the funniest things. Yeah. Ever. Uh, even not even, it wasn't even televised. Uh, when was it like probably two, two or three months ago, he was at a, he was at an indie event in the UK North wrestling. Uh, and he was like Elijah, formerly Elias. And he just, he just makes these songs. So like before he came out, it was, um, it was, uh, higher from Creed, but it was just like, can you please get fired? Because you've done it twice before. Or maybe that was, no, that might have been on Impact with AJ Francis. Either way, he just has these, like, he crushes it. And I was really looking forward to seeing that on WWE. I don't know that we ever will because of, like, copyrights and stuff. But, like, the guy just, he just gets it. And he's, like, he's, he's decent enough in the ring and everything. And it's, like, one of those things that, like, yeah, he might not be like he's good in the ring. Don't get me wrong; he'll get that twisted there. But like, even if he wasn't that great in the ring, it's like it's it's again like to go back to comparing it that way. It's almost like The Rock, where it's just like it doesn't even really matter how great or isn't he. He isn't in the ring because of like all of this other stuff that he just gets all of us on and can captivate all of us with. Like it doesn't yeah. even matter. He is good in the ring, but even if he wasn't, it wouldn't matter because like you know, anytime I hear that song, I annoy my wife to death 
just you know yeah. walking around just people because like, i've been in london and paris and Turkey. yeah you know that's amazing yeah he's just yeah fantastic yeah it's not only that he's the a package deal he's just authentic too like you know yes. that like look i mean this week he was in the ring one on you know having a promo battle with uh ethan ego i mean the champion of nxt right. that's just not unheard of to have someone from a different brand mm -hmm. you know go one-on-one -on -one just going for with, it yeah on the sticks with with the champion of the wwe's you know whatever brand you want to call it nxt it's uh it's really cool to see um I just hope they do something. I, I don't know if this is, you know, you, you can read between the lines, which I do a lot. And I think you brought this up last time, mm -hmm. you know, maybe they're just giving him a lot of TV time because his contracts, you know, up and I, I don't yeah. want to think of that in that I, way, but yeah, yeah. But no, it, I, I mean, feel, yeah. business is business, but um, exactly. It's incredible. Again. Yeah. We'll never see something like this. Cause this is just the start of what could be great. I mean, yeah, the rascals, that was really fun, but mm -hmm. give me moose, you know, give me moose going one-on-one -on -one with ego. Give me, you know, something like that. I think, like oh, you said, I, long want, time. I want Josh Alexander and Chad Gable. So bad. The Duder. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. bad. I want that match. TNA crossover. Let's For, do I want I want I want a 20 minute draw. No, uh, like a 30 minute draw to that one. Yeah. Just let them just go. Let them chain. Yeah. Wrestle. Awesome. <laughs> yeah all right buddy let's get to the next yeah, topic so. here we go it is brian danielson um brian danielson keith could be stepping into the ring for the last time at aew all in in london august 25th at wembley stadium um it's it's um again i, I guess the, the the key the word of the day is historical i mean yeah with Hendry, yes, but like Brian Danielson, it's on a, a another level just because what he's done for not only AEW but for the independent scene for the WWE. I mean, this is a big deal. I don't think it's going to be his last match, but I think it's going to be something special. I I don't want to say he's going to win the title, but um, I, let's just talk about him, his position he's in right now, and then. Let's talk about the legacy because it's a big deal, man. What do you got? Let's hear it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's he's he's just someone that it's like, what can we what yeah. can we even say that like hasn't been said? And if it is, if it is all going to end at Wembley, um, that's that's okay, you know. Yeah. Um, we never even thought he was going to come back. We thought it was over, you know. Yeah. Jesus, when was that? After WrestleMania thirty one. Like nine years yeah, ago, yeah. it might have been lighter than that. Whatever, like we just, we thought it was over a while ago, uh, yeah. and then we we got to be lucky people where he's just like, nah, like I'm clear, and he came back, and yeah. then you know, <clears throat> just um, he's just great. Everything, everything, everything he's done has been. I don't want to say it's been better than the thing he's done before, but like, yeah, you in a that. not insulting way, he's like a Jericho, where it's just like he can reinvent himself and he can get that new thing over quickly yeah. because of just how good he is with stuff. Jericho kind of lost that touch now, but yeah, back in the day, that's how Jericho was. And like, you know, you, you look at him from just being kind of just like an innovator or whatever guy almost. And when he first started out, like in ring of honor and stuff and just building himself up and finding himself, yeah. like he even says himself, like found himself in ring of honor when he became ring of honor champion. He was just like, I was kind of like the last option at the time because of like, some people were leaving. Some people were like, too, other people were just like hurt. They didn't have anyone else to put the company on the back, like put their company, you know, didn't have anyone else to put the company on their back. But so they, they let me go for it. And then he shined, you know, and the, yeah. I, you know, I have till five and like, oh, just yeah, glorious stuff. A absolutely. Like, frankly, terrifying to watch matches between him and Nig Nigel McGinnis from back in the oh, day yeah. where it's just like, no wonder Nigel is like not clear yeah. to at, at right now. And maybe he is, maybe he isn't. Um, yeah. there is a part of me that hopes, I, I don't know. I don't know if Wembley is going to be his last match. There is a part of me that I would love to see him and Nigel run it back one more time and have that be his last match. That would um, be cool. Nigel said he's, 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 yeah. he's there. He and he's been, it. Nigel just talks smack every oh, yeah. time <laughs> he's on TV. It's funny. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. I mean. 
it's it's kind of crazy we're like talking about uh Danielson's retirement in the same year that like Cena announced his own retirement because it's like when they yeah. had their feud even in WWE like it is just literally like you know it's a comparison of the sports entertainer to the wrestler and it's like you know when we talked about Cena's retirement on here you know we kind of talked about how like he's he's going to be on the Mount Rushmore for some people and stuff Cena that is and everything and it's like in the same yeah. way Brian is too for like the people that I mean, for like the wrestling wrestling fans that follow a little bit yeah. of everything as much as they can like absolutely I mean yeah he was able to be the indie guy doing stuff for you know, 50 people in a, in a popcorn stand and everything to, you know, uh, be in the, w- winning the world title at WrestleMania 30 and yeah. then having to give that up and everything and then debut in an AEW and like start it all over again. And now maybe yeah. he wins it again at Wembley. We don't know. Yeah. Um, I'm one of those people that would have him on my Mount Rushmore just for because sure. of what he's done for the wrestling industry. And I'm comfortable saying this i think he's done a lot i'm not going to compare him to an austin or to a hogan but i would say he's up there in the aspect of what we've gotten out of wrestling since he debuted um first things first i mean he changed the game with the independent circuit let's be honest like what he's done yes there was a lot of people a lot of helping hands with seth and ko and nigel i mean there's a lot of people we can thank for the independent circuit and how uh the independent scene and how successful they they've been in a modern, you know, in the modern day, but without Danielson, without Brian doing what he did, it's just, he's like a founding father, you know, like he is, when you think of indie guys, like you think of him, you think of some dude in Washington who's undersized, Mm -hmm. who doesn't know a, a thing about, you know, the WWE product. Yes. He was a fan back in the day. Like, then this guy who is just it's just it's incredible then he goes to the biggest company and he breaks barriers there you know i mean he adapted to what he needed to in the first you know few years of his career but then he was able to become himself and then what did that do that helped other underutilized undersized wrestlers become someone like him you know it's it's really incredible to even look at it like that because it's just like it's so hard to comprehend that this guy from somewhere in you know west coast just you know made the the wrestling industry just i mean even in the wwe he he changed the game in the wwe yes vince leaving had a lot to do with you know what we're seeing now but before that i mean you would not see a daniel bryan or brian danielson main event raw or get a spotlight with the yes movement i mean It's just incredible. And then, like you said, you brought up WrestleMania 30. I mean, that is not to to have one match, not having one match to main event, but having a match to get to the main event against the guy who's probably one of the top heels in the game to beat him and then go one-on-one with, uh, not one-on-one, triple threat, Batista and Randy. I mean, in, in that, in itself is just holy shit you know it's right. it's really cool to see and i mean it just it, it keeps on going he's he wins it the whole yes movement and then he turns heel he has his whole what is it planet champion that is just yeah. another. oh yeah thing. oh my god the hemp title that thing was freaking yeah. cool as hell yes and then yeah. he puts over kofi for Kofi mania. I mean, yep. this guy has not only changed the game in professional wrestling. Again, I'm comfortable in, with saying that I, for sure. He has no doubt in my mind. I mean, that's just in itself with, that's just like the NFL, like changing because of, you know, one person like a Peyton Manning or the Tom Brady making right. new rules for Tom Brady. They, they changed. I mean, Seth Rollins would not be who he is if it wasn't for a Brian Danielson. I mean, yeah, snobby kid who i don't know i've gone on for a long time i'm well, just no, and it's i'm yo, a huge I, fan. I went on yeah. i went on a long time too i was i was letting you do it go for it, it it's it's cool because it's like I, I think like he did like innovate so much stuff but like in a way it's also like he innovated so much stuff because he was almost like a throwback in a lot of ways like yeah to me i always like i always felt like brian was the first one to come around in a while that like 
you kind of looked at him and you were like, oh, maybe, maybe this, maybe this is real again or yeah. something. Like, made you almost like buy that it was real. Like, you know, because you, <clears throat> you look at like all those guys from, from back in the past and like, you know, watching like some of those old, like old, old, like 80s, early 80s matches from like the territories and stuff. And like, you know, you're watching Terry Funk throw a punch at a guy and you're just like, I don't, I don't know that that's fake. Like, he looks like he's just straight up beating this guy up. Yeah. And then, you know, the, the comebacks and all and everything like that. And, like, I can remember, like, distinctly the first time I saw, like, a clip of, like, a Daniel Bryan match or whatever when he does the hold in the hands and the stomp in the head. And I'm just like, yeah, like, again, and that's me as, you know, being 20, 20 years old, whatever it was when I saw it and just being like, like, yeah. I know, I know that this isn't, like, real. Like, they're not, it's not, like, real combat, but, like, how does he do it? Jesus, yeah. what is what's happening there? Because like I understand, like maybe he's not kicking him with his full force, but it sure looks yeah. like he is. Like he's really making it look like he's really kicking the crap out of that dude's head. And like, wow, yeah. you know, um, yeah. And it's it's he's just he can like do all of it. Like he's a guy. He's a guy that had. He's a guy that like got so much, like influence and everything with the fans like had so much power and whatnot with the fans that like they booed the rock like when yeah. he wasn't when he wasn't even in the 2015 royal rumble that roman won and they had the rock come out and hold the hand and you know yeah. the start to the blood you know, start to the the final boss story and everything Get the hell out of here with that but like that all happened and like philly booed him because we're just like no yeah. daniel bryan yeah. wasn't even in this this is bull <laughs> get the hell out of here yeah. no way and like you have an icon like the rock who at that point wasn't even like a part-timer he had more or less just been gone and he showed up and it was just like no boo no yeah. daniel bryan daniel bryan is the one that should have been in and won this friggin' yeah, match right. and, that, like, and that's happened a few times i, I remember the right. time where cena was in the ring with it was a shit ton of guys and i think it was cena and uh and randy and i think it was for I think that's when they were going to unify the title or, yeah. or something. I don't know. And they were just chanting DB's name. And it's Mark just Henry like, had to put he, his hand up and everything. Oh yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's just things like that. And yeah. we look at, we look at, you know, again, it is what it is, but Roman Reigns, he was forced down our throats until we said, okay, until he found a gimmick and that was cool enough for mm -hmm. us to like, and we like it now. And we think it's some of the best shit ever, but like Brian Danielson, Daniel Bryan, like, did it on his own like he did not he did not want us to be forced to like him he was going to make us like him and that's what he did i mean we just talked about wrestlemania 30 he wasn't done there i mean we brought up the um the planet champion i mean that was some of his best work oh I mean, yeah ever and that was after Absolutely. his his peak in the biggest wrestling industry company in the world and he's just continues to do the best and then his aew run i mean yep. it's been amazing it's been a lot of oh shit maybe he's done maybe he's done but again he's just like an everyman he's just like an underdog he's just like our favorite guy rocky he just keeps going man he keeps right. going he doesn't give a shit yeah he might take three or four months between each match but i mean look what he's done with aew uh, the black bull black pool combat club that was cool. He brought Regal back for a hot second. Yep. That was really cool. His matches with MJF made me a believer in MJF. And I, I love MJF. I think he's one of the top heels in the industry. But to put up and do probably his best work in ring with uh, Brian Danielson, you get an okay boy with me, you know. Absolutely. Um, and just the the role that he's taking now, and hopefully he'll – will stay with that with AEW. I don't know what he's gonna do, but um I'm excited. I, I think it's it's time. As much as I don't want to say that because I really wanted to see him, you know, wrestle every week, but right. it's time. And you can see it and it makes sense. Yeah. I mean I, I just I just have a worry. I don't want him to go like the flare route. Like if he's if oh, he's like yeah. really considering retirement and everything like seriously now like he is, that's awesome. And I want him to yeah. kind of just do it because I don't want, you know, I don't want six yeah. retirements. I don't want him to retire or even, <clears throat> you know, God rest yeah. his soul. And I love the guy and all, but like, not like Terry Funk either. Funk retired yeah. like 18 times and then kept coming back and wrestled. And he was still like, until he was like 75 yeah, was... and everything. And it's just like, no man, yeah. like, 
Yeah. Enjoy your life. You, you've you've done you've already done you you've done a ton for yeah. us as wrestling fans. You've done so much, and we love you for it. You you really you don't have to do anymore. We're okay with yeah. it. Go enjoy your kids. Enjoy the years that you have exactly. without like you know being completely broken boned and everything. Open a yeah. wrestling school if you really need to. That'd be awesome. Open a wrestling school. Give us a new generation of people that wrestle like you. I'm fine with that. You don't have to take yeah. bumps anymore. You don't have to be in blood and guts matches. You know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or go one on one with Jeff Jarrett for no reason. But that's exactly. another day and, and another take time. Take a massive yeah. guitar shot. Holy hell! Yeah. Oh, I could go in. I could yeah. go in for days on that. It's like you're trying to put him over, and you're beating his ass. It's just we're let's not talk about that. We're not here to um, shit on AEW. Let's get no. to the last segment here. Let's get to retire. Yeah. I or revive game time Keith so I got names we're going to start with retire I got three names um who's going to retire okay. as easy as that and then we'll get to rehire and then we'll get to revive right. let's with this I'm glad we're starting with retire because my my retire ones for you are probably my weakest ones that I have but that's okay yeah so I'm glad we're starting here because I'll only get better but let's do it what do you got for me first and then I'll go to you solo Sokoa Bronson Reed, Dominic Mysterio. Who's going to retire? Oh. I told you. I told you. I got some toughies tonight. Damn. Damn. So Dom, Bronson Reed, or Solo. Yeah. <sighs> I'm going to. Mm, I'm going to go Dom. I'm gonna go dirty dom. Wow. Um, only only because it can't be Bronson Reed for me because they're 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 finally cooking with him now and I want him to go far. Yeah. Um and it can't be solo yet because he's really he's balls deep in the story that we all want to see, so I need him to hang around longer. Dom, I know, is in the midst of everything with stuff now too, but I want those other two things more than I need to keep Dom on my screen, unfortunately. I'm sorry, wow. dirty dom. I really thought yeah. you, were, you were gonna pick solo. I, I debated it, but I because of how much I want Bloodline versus Bloodline 2.0 and war games, yeah. he's gotta stick around. Yeah. If we if we revisit right. this, if we revisit this in like January, my answer would probably maybe change. We'll see. But give it to me. <laughs> for right now, I'm going Tom. All right. So remember, these are my weaker ones I have for retire, but I'm gonna go uh so retire. Jericho, punk. Or Soraya. Ah, oh, man. This is, this I is feel like for me, this is harder differently because for me, it's just kind of like, well, all of you. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Only one. Well, if you're keeping it, mean, you can only make one retire. The other two have to keep going. Yeah. It's an easy one for me. I'm going to go with Jericho. I'm just done. As much as I think he can, he's been one of the best, if not the greatest, at just, you know, developing a new character. The whole learning tree, I get it. I get what he's trying to do, but it just makes it worse, man. It makes an old guy trying to be annoying and uh, mm -hmm. funny and, you know, the, the class clown and the, the smarty pants. It's just like, oh, please. Yeah. And agree. what is Sriracha? Sriracha, uh, she's just, I don't know. The last time I think she wrestled was what? All in, all out? I, I don't know. So, yeah, I'm okay with Jericho leaving. I think she's been doing stuff on Collision uh, like, and or collision. Rampage. Yeah. Her, and Har her and Harley Cameron are like paired up and stuff, but no, I mean, she might want to retire. I feel yeah. I, I was I was going with Jericho in that one too. Um, All right, learning tree thing was cool for like a week, and then I got over it real fast. But sorry, another another time. No. Okay. what do you got? No, you're good. Let's do it. The ladies edition: Cora oh. Jade, Tiffany Stratton, and Nikita Lyons. This is retire again retire cora tiffany nikita this one's an easy one for me that i'll probably get a lot of hate for uh it's nikita. cora jade oh cora, cora jade. okay yeah why I, I i have never i've i from i know when she came into nxt there was a lot of like yes. buzz going on with her from like whatever who whatever her name was and whatever she was doing on the indies i have just i've, I've never i've never gotten it with her i mean yeah. i just i never got behind her I'm with you. The heel turn uh, with her and everything. I, I she was. I really hated her as a face. Um, 
didn't like her any better with the heel turn. Uh, maybe a little yeah. bit better when she turned heel. It was like a little bit better, but I just yeah, she doesn't. Uh, no, nothing it's that tough. she does is like super impressive to me. But like everyone tells me, it's supposed to be super impressive, and I just I don't see it. Nikita, yeah. Nikita's a close second. The only reason I'm not going to Nikita is because. I haven't seen enough from her to like pass a judgment yet. She yeah. came in, she was doing well enough or whatever, and then she she blew her knee out. Then she just hasn't been around since because I think she's still rehabbing or whatever is going yeah. on. So like I can't, I, I don't want to, I don't want to put it on her because I haven't like gotten enough to like pass a good judgment on her. And Tiffy's not going anywhere. Yeah, not yet. What do you I don't got? Want her to go anymore? I got these. These are pretty weak, but I got I got another another chunk for you. So Natalia, yeah, give it to me. Uh, so Natalia, PCO, or Frankie Kazarian. I was in TNA mindset at that time. Yeah. Not the greatest ones. No, I'm I'm gonna go with Natalia. I think it's just I'm over it, man. I, I'm over the gimmick. I get she's part of the the heart um, you know, family or associated with it, but it's just like, okay, have a good day. Thank you. Become a trainer like your husband or a producer. You're probably better with that. But yeah, that's an easy one. All right, Keith, the last one here for retire. Yeah. Ready? Pick up yes. Satu, Carmelo Hayes, and Braun Breaker. Fatu, Hayes, and Breaker. It pains me to say this. It pains me a lot to say it, but just with with how he's been. Let's hear it. Out of those three, it's it's gotta be mellow. Um, wow. he just hasn't, I don't know what it is. I don't know why it is. Yeah. He just has not been hit yeah. since he got called up. Um, I That's feel tough. like maybe they're working on something new with him right now where it's like, oh, Melo don't miss, Melo don't miss. And then he keeps losing, but I don't even yeah. really want that. I don't want like comedy thing, like comedy gimmick Carmelo Hayes. Like, yeah. Good. Let him be good. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I just, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's something where just like the bigger crowd is like messing with his confidence yeah. or something, but like him and That's NXT, him and NXT, untouchable. Uh, amazing. Yeah. I love you know what? He, Hayes in NXT. I mean, pardon the pun, but he could be him in NXT. Yes. On the main roster, he's just like that guy. They. Yeah. Them. Him. Someone he, else. Yeah. Whatever. All right. Let's get to it. Rehire. Yeah. I'm first this is the most difficult one you're going to get are you ready oh, i love it yes bring it on val venus jim cornet ryback give it to me brother oh. rehire val venus jim cornet or ryback i'm gonna make you a villain yeah good lord jesus that's all right i got a good reason for this um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Cornet because you Where's bring Cornet, you rehire Warriors. Cornette. Yeah, bring it on, bring it on. Because listen to what this reasoning is, and you're all gonna agree with me. I don't agree with a lot of his takes on like anything. However, I love listening to his like older interviews yeah. where he like rants and shoots on everybody that he used to work with. Yeah. So with that in mind. Let's let's rehire Cornet. Uh, let's let's let him get him under like a one, maybe two year contract. Don't really change anything. Don't listen to him or anything like that. Let him then let him leave. So then you know we give him like a two year con. We bring him back for a two year contract. So then like three years from now, we get a whole new chunk of interview of shoot interviews with him talking smack about the the backstage. I and I will I'll be all over that. The other two um, they can they, all yeah. three of them can quite frankly go to hell. But yes. I would love to hear some Jim Cornette rant. And that's that was dirty, man. That was a real dirty yeah. one. You said you fucking asshole. <laughs> Give it to me. What do you got? Rehire. All right. So Swerve, okay. Cardona, or Athena, formerly Ember Moon. I want to say Cardona, but he's just this is his gimmick now. It's like mm -hmm. not being part of uh, a big organization. So I'm not going to go there. I really do want to see Swerve one more time in the WWE because I really thought when they had him in Hit Row for the first time, the first um, 
ever hit row, right. not the third or fourth edition, the first edition <laughs> was really cool. It was really something special. And all of them in that um, group could get over, maybe except for BFAB. But other than that, it was just like, this could be something. It was kind of like the Hurt Business. It was so short and so sweet. It's just like, we kind of want to see that again. So with that in mind, and also like just him in ring, it's just, you know, mm. it's not the WWE type. I get that. He's more so AEW and, you know, independent and even maybe impact. But yeah, I would, I, you got to go swerve, man. You just, yeah. it's just, he's just special, you know? No, that's a, that was a good it, call. Swerve, you know? swerve yeah. or Athena were the right answers there. Cardona, yeah. I would love for him to come back, but I don't want him to be Zack Ryder again. I want him to just be yeah. who he is and continue to be there, and that won't happen. Um, no. But we're, no, no, I like that. We got another one. We got, what else you got for me? Yeah, it I got it. can't be uh, worse than that one. That was freaking brutal, man. You ready? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> An A-bomb from a Right, Alex Riley, my boy, Chris Masters, Chris Adonis, whatever you want to call him, right. and Damian Sandow. So oh. Riley, Masters, Sandow. Easy one. Give me, give me Damian Sandow back. Yeah. He's been, yeah. Um, I still, I'll catch him still every once in a while when I, when I catch NWA Power. Um, him was Aaron Stevens on there. He's still doing good work. Yeah. I would bring him back. He doesn't have to wrestle necessarily. Bring him back as a manager for someone or something. Put him in Some, NXT. Have him replace Robert Stone and Stevie yeah. Turner as like Ava's assistant. I'm all about that. Um, yeah. Hey, I, Riley. I never really yeah. got him. Don't um, you talk bad about Chris. Don't you do no, it. No, no, no. I, it, it was Alex Riley. I never really got him. Masters is, he's fine. But oh, I, he, I'm not, I, I'm not saying anything bad. He, I don't, <laughs> I just. I loved Damian Sandow when he was there the first time no. around, and he got he got robbed. I would love for him to yeah. get a redemption for sure. No, he is he is probably the best answer there, just because of a he knows the WWE product, mm -hmm. he's in the WWE. You can't really say that for Riley. You can't really say that for Adonis or Masters. It's just you know they were there. You know Masters had a you know a, a WrestleMania match with Kane and Big Show, and that was cool. But like Sandow got over. You know, what he did in ring was uh, something I don't know if we'll ever see again. Like that entertaining kind of sort of, I don't want to compare him to a legend, but similar to like a, 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 a Morella, you know, like it was just funny and it was just really, really good. Um, yep. Anything else you want to get to revive? Uh, I got, I got one more for you for rehire. Let's hear it. So again, and these were mine were obviously, and I don't know if yours were too. I was going off of it though, but rehire obviously to WWE. Uh, so Samoa Joe, Ooh. Mandy Rose, or the Hardy Boys as a package. The Hardy Boys. I don't want to split them. <sighs> I wasn't going to split them that way. So Hardy Boys as a team, Mandy Rose, Samoa Joe. For some reason, I, I'm just. I got to pick Mandy. I just got to oh, know some, what... For some reason? Yeah, I just got to know what she has. I mean, it's been, what, like yeah. almost three years? And we've seen the returns with Joe. We've seen the a massive pop with the Hardys. Like, I've seen that before. Right. And I know we're playing, like, who we're going to rehire right now. But, you know, Hardys are definitely going back to the, the WWE. They, they're going to get inducted. Like, it's, it's going to happen. Yeah. But for Mandy Rose, it's just like... I still have so many questions like why why didn't someone say just no more only fans or i don't know what happened i don't right. but i right. know at the very end of her career kind of like uh the chris masters chris adonis like at the very end of their career they finally got it and then they got canned so yeah I mean, it might not be popular because i think a lot of people wanted uh, another joe or another hardy's return but Give me your Mandy. I want to see what she has yeah. left. No, that was, I mean, out of those three, that's what I was going yeah. for too. Joe is great and all, but I, I also, I haven't, Joe has, I haven't like missed like WWE Joe or anything like that. Like the way he's been doing his thing in AEW, he's been, I've been, yeah. I've been perfectly satisfied with the amount of Joe I'm getting there. And the yeah. Hardys are just, uh, you know, they're another it's one of them. It's, like, it's getting yeah. to be like flair. It's just like, just. Just, just leave it alone. Like, come back one more time yeah. so we can we can pop. Sign a Legends deal. Come back on the Legends deal. Come back at, like, the Rumble so we can cheer real loud for it. And then yeah. go into the Hall of Fame next year and call it a day. Yeah. 
Let's get to it. Revive. Yeah, revive. Ready, buddy? So yeah, well before before we start the revive one, I because I don't I don't know. Well, no, go ahead, because I don't know if what you have down. I don't want to steal anything away from it, but I'll I'll bring up mine later. Yeah, sorry. No, you're good. I don't think <laughs> if you have these guys and we're on fucking, you know, the same page, <laughs> that would be incredible. And that would be worth a record and to put onto YouTube. Uh let's get to it. Yeah. The big boss man. Howard Finkel, the Iron Sheik. Oh, out of those three, it's it's the Fink, man. Holy the shit. Fink. To have him again. No no disrespect to Samantha Irvin. No. Or, um, you know, any of the other two. Yeah. It's, but, come on, man. No one's, yeah. no one's the Fink. It's no just... It's, it's, well, yeah. You can't... You don't get better than him. Like, you know? Yeah. And because he was a ring announcer, you bring him back, he can still do it. He can still just sit yeah. on the side, let him just sit off there, don't bring him in the ring. Let him sit there. He's still got the great voice to go ahead and... Yeah. He's just iconic. It's got to be him. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. What do you got? All right. I'm going... I got three old school for you. Uh, so, Owen Hart, Brian Pillman, Chris Candido. I'm going to go with Pillman just because I want to see him and his, 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 his son like actually like interact not just on screen but you know we're gonna play the violin here but this to have that you know personal because you know um brian pillman jr really didn't know his father i'm getting too right. getting too emotional no, 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 but i you i, I would I bring feel you. Pillman, I, yeah. I feel like a lot of people looking at those three they'd be like oh well owen hart because of the tragedy and all and it was a tragedy i'm not trying to doubt yeah. that in any way i would also go with pillman um only because, like, I feel like Pillman also, especially after watching his, like, Dark Side of the Ring and everything, he, like, never really got a full, like, good shot at anything in WWE because of, like, injuries and stuff. Yeah. So, like, being able to bring him back, like, clean him up and everything, bring him back, like, rewind, try to, like, because to me, these revived ones are, like, rewind time and, like, bring them back, like, yeah. in their prime for whatever or whatever and whatnot, too. So, like... Yeah. Bring Pillman back, get him off of drugs and everything, clean his ass up and let him like actually get a good yeah. shake in the WWE and you know, talk we'd be talking yeah. about a whole and different lineage of history here at that point. Yeah. And he could have I don't want to say I don't want to compare anyone to uh, Brian Danielson, but he could have mm -hmm. been a game changer too with what he's what he Absolutely. did. I mean, it was just like you would never see it before and again. I mean, maybe with trips and AEW, maybe there's a little leadway with what he could do more darker, you know, hu darker, whatever shtick that he had. But yeah, that would be cool. That's yeah. all I got here with uh, revive. You got any more? Uh, so no, I mean, I had, I had another one that was written down that I just, that was one I didn't really want to steal, but it's not even like one of the choices. It's just someone that like, I really, in terms of this game, he should be revived anyway. It was Brody Lee. Um, for like the same reasons yeah. of just like, he got, Absolutely. he got cut. We just, we lost him so soon. It's like, you know, it's such a cheesy thing to say, yeah. like cliche or whatever, but like we did lose him so soon no. like, in the midst of like, you know, for a lot of people, the first time they got to really like see him be yep. like a real like character. And like, we started yeah. getting rolling with him as Mr. Brody Lee and the dark order and all. And it was like, just, oh, bam. Yeah. Us out. So he's, he's like an honorary one. Like he's a choice that everyone would pick. Absolutely. In, in the revive. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's all I got. Yeah, well, let's get to it, buddy. Let's end the uh, the episode here. Again, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining us. Keith, give the people what they want. How can they find you? You already know I am on X and TikTok at Keith of the Ring, and I am on Instagram at underscore Keith of the Ring. Yes, sir, and you can find us right here on YouTube, X, Twitter, um, Instagram, any any social media platform. We are there. Go check us out. We have a fancy website, uwpod.com. A ton of interviews, a ton of content, mm -hmm. a ton of shorts. You want to listen to us on the go? We are on all audio platforms, all major audio platforms. Go check us out. We're right there with Joe Rogan on Spotify. So, uh, yeah, have a good night, and we'll see you next time right here on the UW Pod. Peace. Peace.